our president, Dr. Bradley Walker Grafia. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you all this morning? Hey, you all actually sound like you're good. Hey, that's a good thing. Um, we have a lot to get started on today, a lot of groups um, that are going to present showcasing the great work that's been done, uh, some before I got here, some while I've been here. And so I'm really excited to introduce uh, to you those groups because today is a day of opportunity for us. We are going to be talking about how we are charting our future. And so in order to chart our future, we need all the voices talking about where we're going, what we're going to do, and what's my word I like to use? Imagineers, Imagineers. So I am going to start with our AQIP projects. Um, everybody, I think, in here knows about those AQIP projects and what they were. They have all concluded now. And we wanted to share with you the outcomes of those projects. So we're going to begin with Dr. Fugate, who's going to introduce each one of the projects. And we're going to have about 15 minutes that we're going to spend listening to our three groups. And then we're going to have about 15 minutes of question and answers. And then we're going to move. And I'm going to kind of keep us on schedule because we are uh, videotaping this session. And we need to make sure that we keep it concise. So Dr. Fugate, will you please come forward? <laughs> Good morning. She was very kind when she said you all know about all the AQIP projects, right? Because the first thing I'm going to do is a quiz about the AQIP projects. Uh, who can name all of them? Mm -hmm. That's why we thought we'd do this. Now, seriously, um, is there a slide? Is there somebody doing slides? I don't. Sorry, Lisa. I don't. No, I thought Michael. I think Michael knows the slides, right? Anyway, AQIP is our accreditation, and a number of years ago, we decided to go with this AQIP model. Accreditation can be done in two ways. One is AQIP. The other one is every 10 years, you go up for accreditation. And so what that means in, in most instances, in my experience, is year nine is a ru mad rush to try to do a self-study and remember everything you've done for the last nine years so that you can get accredited for another 10 years. And so when there was a chance to go with AQIP, Dr. Shank moved the college into the AQIP model. And this is just a real quick, if you remember, the AQIP model says that continuous quality improvement is what we should be doing. And it makes sense. Rather than do accreditation once every 10 years, where you try to, you know, we make everybody miserable trying to write up stuff that they did for nine years. Because who keeps track of what you've done for nine years, right? And so this says we just keep it going all the time. And we have these projects. And the projects are three-year cycles of projects. And, they, and once they've completed it, when we get all three completed, we retire the projects and we start new ones. And so um, we will be rolling out new projects uh, based on the conversation days that were held in December. So we'll have some new projects coming out, but we wanted to finish these first. So I'm really happy to introduce to you some people that are going to report. They went through all these stages. Um, they then make a report of recommendations or ideas that they have to the executive cabinet, and we go from there to try to implement them. If you think back to AQIP projects, way back, the first year of AQIP projects included a project on professional development. There was no CTL at that time, and now you know what's up on the third floor of the library. One of the projects that year was experiential learning, and look at all the stuff you're seeing now about students and the experiential learning, and some of you are participating in service learning and service Saturdays, and so the expansion of that. The third one that year was degree audit which is one of the products where students can go in and advisors can go in and do degree audits for students to see where they are. Um, this past group of projects were the project on green initiatives and recycling. We had a project that was student retention. And the student retention had started out with using a data tell project called Retention Alert. 
And we decided to take that, we'd learned how to use the computer system, and it wasn't an AQIP project, but to broaden that to look at the whole issue of retention and make some recommendations there. And then the student pathways. And this was just the last group that finished up. And you're hearing a lot about pathways right now because we are doing a new pathways initiative. And this group went, hey, it's our AQIP project, and now you're starting this new initiative. But you'll see how it all feeds together. Um, you'll be amazed how much feeds together from all of these. So the co-chairs of the Green Initiatives and Recycling Project were Lisa Poma and Larry Eukartz, and Lisa drew the straw to get to present at all four sessions. Wasn't that nice of her? So uh, please welcome Lisa to share with you about the Green Project. Happy Tuesday. I'm not going to say good morning because it's already been said a couple of times. So like Dr. Fugate said, after hearing from employees and students alike that they wanted more opportunities to be green, the AQIP Green Initiatives in Recycling team was formed. Larry Eukartz and I were the co-chairs of that committee. Our other members are listed up here on the slide. As you can see, we had a good representation from all areas of the college. Anybody here from the green team? I see Larry in the back. Larry was our EC sponsor, so he attended some of our meetings. Thank you, Larry. Um, the green team was charged with finding ways to raise awareness and increase employee involvement in a campus-wide sustainability plan focusing on recycling, using resources efficiently, and lowering operating and energy costs. Uh, we began by taking an inventory of all of the current green initiatives and recycling projects um, on campus. Uh, examples of these uh, include the installation of the mo motion sensor lights that most of us have in our offices and classrooms, um, the use of electric powered vehicles in the facilities area and the events office, um, some other areas on campus. You see the little white carts driving around on campus. Um, the recycling bins in all offices, the little green ones that we have now, um, and also the recycling stations that are now located throughout campus. And a comprehensive list of all these initiatives can be found on the AQIP, AQIP webpage and also on the Green Initiatives webpage on the MOT website. Uh, the team also conducted some field research at Washtenaw Community College's Recycling Center. That was an awesome meeting and trip for us. They have a wonderful recycling center down there. Um, it's completely uh, self-sustaining. Uh, what we took away from that meeting uh, at Washtenaw uh, about the success of their program were a couple of key points. Um, one was that it's really about creating a campus culture where everyone is on board and willing to do their part. Employees buy into it down there. They want to be a part of the recycling efforts and the green initiative efforts on campus. Um, and then also it's about a new mindset about turning the waste stream into a revenue stream. They really believe down there that this is our trash, this is our junk, we own it, and we can actually make money off of it. And they do that. So after all of this uh, research and site visits, and, and we also did, we met with the, um, the leadership team and we polled them, uh, we did a survey uh, we did some other research, and we came up with uh, these recommendations. We thought it would be beneficial to construct a master plan for the future of green and recycling initiatives that would be a part of the facilities master plan that would allow us to set measurable goals for reducing and diverting waste, and that would look at the ultimate creation of a recycling center that could be supported by revenues earned from that recycling, that taking the west waste stream and our waste stream and turning it into a revenue stream. And then we also recommended that we look at efforts that can expand, that we can expand on to transform waste stream expenses, garbage pickup, et cetera, into revenue for the college by creating a green committee that would support and increase recycling efforts and awareness by reducing waste pickup and disposal expenses, and by maximizing revenue for waste that is resellable, reusable. 
we recommended that we revise some purchasing bid language to promote reduction of waste stream by requiring vendors to follow MCC's green practices and policies during any kind of service or contract work that they're doing on campus. And by requiring vendors to separate and return all waste generated during installation or deinstallation so it can properly can be properly recycled and or sold. The final recommendation was to find a way to promote cultural change, either through uh, a board policy on recycling, some kind of statement or commitment on recycling, um, kind of like the cultural value statement, um, to continue to support GRIT's efforts to promote, educate, and increase participation in green initiatives, um, to become an institu institutional member of the Michigan Recycling Coalition, and I believe that's something that we've already done for the last past couple of years, um, and other selected organizations that share best practices on recycling and uh, green initiatives. And then also we thought it would be beneficial if we participated in some recycling programs, conferences, forums, et cetera. Um, there's also some contests out there um, uh, collegiate ones um, like uh, uh, the National Recycle Mania that would kind of um, get excitement going about our efforts here on campus and also trickle down to the students um, and get them involved as well. So basically that's it for our recommendations. Um, I'd like to say in the words of Kermit the Frog, it's not easy being green. <laughs> but I believe that the green team um, has done some important work and made some important strides to enhancing recycling and green initiatives at Mott Community College. Thank you. The uh, next group was the Retention Alert, and that group was co-chaired by Kirk Yaros and Mike Selinski. And I'm not sure who's presenting at this session. Mara, yes, all right. Um, but um, I think if you watch our numbers, we're all concerned about decreasing enrollment, right? That's that we all see it. We know that things are shrinking. One of the key things for us is retention and how do we keep the students that do come here, how do we keep them and get them through? So. Um, <clears throat> Present away. Okay, the retention team consisted um, of the, the members that you see here. Um, you can kind of tell that this is a cross-functional team. It's representative of faculty and staff from many different areas throughout the college. Um, and we kicked off in early 2013. And this is our goal that you see here, to study and recommend strategies to increase student retention. So one of the positives of having a cross such a large cross-functional team <laughs> is that it, um, it kicked off some very, very good conversations and discussions, which um, brought many different perspectives and things like that. But one of the challenges that that type of size of group and all those different perspectives brings is um, it's kind of hard to get to a narrow, to reach your goal of you know, coming up with some recommendations and strategies. So we did a lot of break off sessions and things like that to kind of, <laughs> We work very hard on trying to define retention from a lot of yeah, different angles. There was a whether lot it was of discussion. Semester to semester, or whether it was year to year, or yeah. just simply reaching a certain goal. So it's sort of like trying to come up with the definition of student success. Right. So things as simple as that became, you know, three or four different meetings of conversations and things like that. So to, we, we recognized this problem and um, decided to do some different breakout activities and things like that to try to come up with some things to get towards our goal. And each and every time we did this, we realized that when we came back and shared the group results, there were three different areas or topics that um, emerged each time. And that was policy, technology, and student experience or cohort learning. And each of these sort of led to um, potential recommendations down the road based on uh, both the literature that we were d reviewing along the way, um, the data that Mott had as well, um, iPads, and a variety of other resources. And we came up with you know, things that we had to address, which was how does the institution re, uh, respond to the student in, or even anticipate the student's needs? How does the student help themselves? And then how do students help each other? Right. Um, so one thing to, to mention is that under the policy category, it was kind of 
how does the institution affect the student or influence the student? And that in, includes, you know, reviewing the existing policies that we have in place that could be possible barriers to students, um, but also kind of researching best practices of policies that you could implement to um, encourage students to, to do well. Um, and the technology column or section is kind of a student self-service thing. What can we do to put, to put things in place so that students can help themselves? Um, and that is, you know, researching different softwares to assist advising and planning and things like that. That's um, so that students can do their own degree audit. They can do things for themselves, see where they're at in their progression, that type of thing. So, see, oh. a, so, me, so a student yeah. that um, is making progress but is not sure how much financial aid they have. That's what I was going to uh, say. Oh, but they also, <laughs> they also, but I was, I know, and I'm going to, but I'm going to, I'm going to tie it back in. The other th side they'll often do is change their, change their mind on what degree they want. So we want to show them the impact of that or those divergence off of that path that Pathways is going to keep you on. Um, how that impacts it. So I'll let you talk about the financial aid side of that. So. <laughs> Thanks. So yeah, as well as the student being able to log into their web advisor or the portal or whatever and see, if I switched majors, how much longer would I be here? The, the idea was, if I switched majors, how close am I to running out of my financial aid? Or if I withdraw from this class, where am I at with my financial aid? Also, we had thought about being able to put some financial literacy things in, into that. So doing something for the students where they would be able to see on their portal, um, what is my debt as of today or as of this year? Or what do I already owe? Um, what do my student loan repayment um, monthly amounts look like at this point? So should I consider with this path or should I take on, change my major, major and take on another year of, of debt? So we saw this as a very important important uh, tool of information for the students that was interactive so they could see the impact of their decisions even before they commit to those decisions. Yep, and then the, the student experience in cohort learning is something where we were hoping that Yes, the, the, the faculty and the institution would influence students, but student to student um, influences as well. So, you know, creating cohort groups where students are engaged, um, creating opportunities for students to be engaged with faculty and things like that. So we have examples already of uh, cohorts on campus, um, nursing and uh, the, the uh, LERDA group, the uh, cohorts that are established because of the way the programs are designed. And then we have some that sort of happen by accident, like in graphic design, we have cohorts that sort of stick together, especially through the last year. And we find that that cohort group uh, tends to lead to greater retention in those areas. So the final recommendations that our group um, had come up with was that there are overarching themes that could make retention initiatives at MC6 successful. And that was to investigate the policies, like I said, the ones that we already have in place that may need to be altered and or putting, putting new ones in place that would ensure student success. Um, anything you want to add to that? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, provide, providing te te technology initiatives that can um, help students help themselves and creating an environment of um, cohort learning. And that's about it. We leave it to questions, I think, right now. Oh, are we doing that at the yeah, end? At the yeah. end, right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> a, a couple of things I'll mention. Um, you saw the camaraderie that builds between AQIP team members, right? Um, uh, Emily gets to direct financial aid. She doesn't even get to say anything good about financial aid because Mara jumps on it here. But um, I think that's one of the benefits of serving on an AQIP team is that you, they are truly cross-functional teams from around the campus. You get to meet different people, but they work hard and they get frustrated at times. And, and you know, how do we get to where we're going to go? And, and they come up with their own methodologies to do that, which is one of the things this group talked about with breaking out into smaller groups. So one of our goals with AQIP is that different people are on the AQIP teams all the time. And so that we try to get, we're going to try to, at some point, everyone will do their time on an AQIP team. So, but we're going to keep trying to get more people involved in that as we head into this new projects of those. So the last group is the group that did Pathways. They were the longest group. It took them till the very end to finish. 
and I'm saying this because you're going to have the two comedians of the group um, address you on this. And I told them I've got a hook if they get going too long with their stand-up routine. But Al and Philip are going to talk about the Pathways groups, and they're now going, oh, comedians, I've heard their shtick before. So... Hello? Hey, now we're in the game. Uh, <clears throat> I'm Al Perry, I'm the Associate Athletic uh, Director, and this is... Philip. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Dr. Fuke said that we were kind of the comedians of the group. I, I disagree with that, but in terms of uh, how long people do uh, time on the AQIP group, I mean, we were basically felons. Uh, we, were, we were in the AQIP group for seven years, I think. I, Ten years, uh, yeah, and I, I now have gray hair. I uh, didn't have gray hair at the beginning of the process, but uh, to tell you a little bit about our cross-functional team, there was 82 members, as you can see, uh, from all over campus, uh, but they were great, and it, Dr. Fugate was right. We did build fantastic relationships, and we were able to accomplish a lot. Uh, one of the ways we did that was trying to identify some of the student pathway issues that were out there. Um, and to do this, we worked with IR to send out a student survey to get feedback directly from our students. Uh, and also having three different focus groups, which we, uh, I think, was the first that Mott had a ever done uh, in terms of actual uh, empirical focus groups. Um, and uh, f from that, we received a, a about a dictionary size data packet. So if you guys would like to check it out, uh, it's on our AQIP website, uh, but it's very informational. And through those, through those different methods, we were able to uh, identify some recommendations that we'd like to bring forth to you today. And I'll let Philip take over from here. One of the main things that we found out through the focus groups is that students really want to know what we want them to do. They, uh, um, they like a degree of choice, but they don't like as many choices as they frankly now have. Um, students are also frustrated when they get misinformation. So a lot of our recommendations came out of those two funnels, giving students what they want and what they need, and helping to uh, um, make sure students knew what they were doing and make sure that we all know what we're doing. Uh, to progress uh, students to declared credentials, we uh, obviously suggested uh, to develop clear pathways. One of the ways of doing that is to see what pathways we already have and to identify then the commonalities uh, among those pathways. Um, that also helps if a student gets into a particular program and they discover that they have no ability to be in that program, they can find another program that is very similar to that that might help them um, get to where they need to be. Um, we also are suggesting a redesign to orientation so that uh, students know more from the beginning beginning exactly what is expected of them on campus, including what's expected of them as a student as well as um, for their program. And of course to reevaluate the scheduling process so that students know when a course that they need to take is going to run and so those students then can group together to take that course and make sure that it does run. As far as informing stakeholders is concerned, we do need to identify existing academic policies and processes um, to see what we are doing already to help students uh, further. Um, we want to identify existing informational processes. Right now we have a few um, methods of letting faculty and uh, staff know of changes, um, but a lot of those processes um, are either overlapping or um, they give information in one direction and perhaps somebody doesn't know to actually look into that direction and then they go into another direction and we get uh, more misinformation. Um, we want to foster an organizational pathways culture. Right now we have, I think uh, it's fair to say, a student-oriented culture. Um, we want to build on that and have all of our processes moving toward helping students on a particular path. Um, and to track individual student progress, sometimes even forcibly. Um, one of the things that we talked about was um, if a student decides that they really, really, really want to take one of say, an uh, upper level class that I might teach one day because it's fun, um, something might actually even pop up and say, 
that sounds like an awesome class and he's great. But that's not going to help you um, succeed in your pathway. Um, to keep students on track then, we also are suggesting a retention specialist in each uh, division, uh, in each area, um, that can help coordinate um, all, of these, um, all of these things. Um, to target specific groups, we know that we have gaps um, with students uh, in specific areas, including class, including other, um, other uh, places. Um, we feel it's important to actually target groups to make sure that those groups are getting what they need uh, to succeed. Um, to provide retention training, obviously this is going to include more ongoing training um, than just saying we're going to do it and then finding out we might not know exactly how to. Um, to develop a first year experience, one of the things that both the retention team and our team saw the need for was something in the first year that helped students understand how to be a student. Um, to uh, evaluate uh, student services even, to see where there are gaps and where um, information might be able to be more, more streamlined, uh, as well as including uh, faculty voice and faculty what we need to do as well um, in that streamlining process. Um, and we are actually suggesting that this work continue with a cross-functional committee, um, not just decide to do pathways and then everyone, again, tries to figure out how to do it, but to continue this working together process. So our expected timeline of implementation is six weeks, Dr. Fugate. Uh, we, we think we'll be able to handle it, so. Uh, outside of that, that's, that's our presentation. We had a great time working uh, within our group, so thank you for listening to us once again. Okay, to keep us on time, because Al took too much, but I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of how he's going to implement everything in six weeks, right? <laughs> Anybody have questions for the AQIP groups at all? See, this is going to make us get right back on time. No questions. Okay, then we're ready to move on. Let's thank the groups again for the great jobs that they've done. I guess I do have one question. Um, green initiatives, how many feel we need to do a greater job of going green? Just raise your hands if you do. Okay, thank you. All righty. That helps a lot, like I said, as we go through and we're charting our future, I need to hear your voices or to see your hands. Uh, for those that have worked with me uh, for the last semester uh, on an, a wonderful journey that we've been on as we have been looking at what we need to do in order to ensure that, hmm, it's not even what we need to do because I'm saying it wrong. I really am. It's what should the experience be for every student that enters our college to ensure that they're successful? And what should the experience be for every employee that we recruit until they leave us? What should that experience be like in order for them to have a successful and fulfilled experience here at Mott? It has been a wonderful journey. As a first year president, I had the opportunity to facilitate two groups that were really, really talkers. <laughs> Debaters, listeners, good colleagues. And so I really learned a lot about Mott through this process, um, what we're great at, what we may not be so great at, where we're really thinking we want to go as a college. I'm very pleased that the groups were represented from across the campus and I think everyone gave their all to the processes. 
So I want to say thank you to all of those that were a part of the group that made it that wonderful experience. And if you were on one of the groups and you're here, would you please stand so we can give you a hand? So we are going to have the first group that's going to share uh, what their recommendations are for this student experience. And if they'll go ahead and come forward. And you've seen the persons that are here to support them. So if there's anything that they need help with, I know that I have people out there that will step up because that's what they do to help each other out as colleagues. So I am going to turn this over to Mary. Is that what I'm saying? Mary and Mara, Kim okay. and Aisha. All right. Thank you. you click. I you click. Just, so just me, I don't think it'll Perfect. Well, hi. <laughs> Back again. Um, I think you'll notice from all the AQIP, uh, and then after we get through this, that there are some themes that we're carrying forward, and it's very f rewarding to see that we're all kind of on the same conversation. Come at it from a lot of different perspectives, but the end result is that we all have the same goals. We want to see students succeed. So with that in mind, Uh, the group consisted of a lot of members. Um, we wanted a very diverse, I mean, um, upper level staff, students, faculty, lower level, traditional students, non-traditional students, um, every aspect that, you know, everyone was there. Um, all of the students that was involved was very, <laughs> all of the students that was involved was very diverse and um, from different angles, from veterinarians to uh, first generation college students. And uh, just to add one other thing to the student portion of it, uh, the students were very much a part of every meeting and they were included in the conversation that went on. In fact, oftentimes the students drove the meeting. We would say, here's what we all thought. We all had wonderful ideas, and they squashed them. <laughs> because they were living the life that we were envisioning for them, and so their feedback, their input was, was just wonderful for what we were trying to accomplish for them. And so we began the process. The group met as a whole 10 times and we have another follow-up meeting scheduled after this has all been brought out. Uh, we started in late January, met pretty much on a weekly basis, and formed subcommittees as we needed to, and met outside of the main group, again, as needed. We reviewed literature from other academic institutions and Mott AQIP reports. Thank you, Al, for those dictionaries. Um, from focus groups and student surveys. One of the first questions had been, should we run a survey again? And we looked at the existing data and we said there's no need to because we had, we had really good data. Okay. Uh, the student group members, like we've mentioned, shared their mod experiences and that helped ground our work. And through that, we worked on discussions framed around five structural questions that were posed to us by Dr. Beverly. Those are? The uh, first one is, who are our students? Um, and the second was, what do students want? What is the experience they want coming to the college? And we asked, what is the end product? What do we believe that should be the characteristics of a successful Mott student? And that the student has changed through the years. What does their behavior and the data say that they really need. And finally, what does Mott need to do from the time they contact us until they become alumni to ensure all students get the successful experience that they deserve? So this resulted after many, many weeks, many discussions, many brainstorming sessions and votes um, and debates, some, 
uh, very energized, uh, in four commitments. They started out as tenets, but they changed to commitments because we really felt that that stated what our intention is, that we are committed to doing these things. So uh, these are the four commitments all in one slide, and I'm not going to read them for you here. So we're going to go right on to the next one. Um, commitment number one. We are a welcoming student success culture, promoting learning, engagement, and completion. And this intention is to go, go to the next one, is, is about culture and the environment where students learn. So our definition, after much debate, we are committed to providing a friendly, nurturing, student-centered environment with engaging and challenging experiences in and out of the classroom. Mott promotes a vibrant student life across all areas of the campus. The college is committed to ensuring completion in a timely manner. Now, you're probably wondering, well, well we, we don't have all of this now. And that's because this is a commitment to what we would like to see happen in the future. And additionally, one of the concerns that was brought out many times is the fact that students are taking their classes working toward completion and often find that they cannot get a class because it's canceled due to low enrollment. So the last statement, the college is committed to ensuring completion in a timely manner, is that we will look at different ways if a course does not have enough students in it to run, independent studies, other initiatives that we can do to ensure that if a student commits to MOT that we are committed to them and we'll see them through to the program's completion. The second commitment, we are here to inform, guide, and support. In the definition, we are committed to clear communication, direction, and guidance designed to help students succeed every step of the way. This is relating in, in many ways to signage. Uh, people come on campus, they can't find where they're going, they get um, different instructions from different people. And so we're looking at trying to get everybody giving the same content when a question is asked by someone coming onto our campus. So it really involves all forms of communication. Signage is the first one. And this was actually brought to our attention by Aisha. Tell us about your experience your first getting dropped on campus. Um, basically, I grew up in um, a not very supporting atmosphere. I didn't have my parents in my life, and I grew up with my grandmother, and she had about 11 and 12 kids, and none of them graduated from like college, and I was a first um, generation college student, and basically um, I was dropped off um, from my uncle because my uncle dropped me off at my, and he didn't know anywhere to like go sign up for my he didn't know like find H A how to find find H A how to do that for myself. And basically, um, when I was dropped off at Mott, like, I didn't know where to go, and it was, I didn't feel like it, the signage was very clear. And at, well, it wasn't very clear. And, um, cause I was, cause there was no signage pretty much outside of the buildings. So I had to find my way there. And um, I believe that having more signage will basically um, make it more clear for other students, prospective students to come and become students here if they desired. And also, this commitment is also based on like our, our website as well because I, cause our website is not very like clear to someone who haven't been a student here. So our third commitment, uh, we are dedicated to developing personalized student success pathways for completion, so this is kind of out, straight out of the AQIP uh, playbook. And we look at these as personalized pathways, but they're not necessarily, um, it doesn't mean we're gonna come up with a million pathways, but it means that there will be opportunities to design the pathway so that a student can complete it based on their circumstances. So this one, commitment says, we are committed to working with every student to ensure that they have a clear educational and career plan based on their goals, strengths, and needs. Mott will assess, advise, support, and empower students to reach their goals. So we're looking at those AQIP projects and we're saying, well, there's some things there we're already looking at that could help support a student get to where they need to be 
and by empowering them, by providing them the information through, say, a dashboard, by providing them a pathway that can be designed to fit through maybe somebody going half-time, having to deal with children and, uh, or a job, and we find a way to help them reach their goals. It may, happen, it may look a little different for one student than for another, but we start with those pathways to make it happen. And last, the last commitment, we are a community leader embracing quality partnerships that promote college and career readiness. We are committed to expanding partnerships with community-based organizations, employers, colleges and universities, and K through 12 schools. Quality partnerships are essential to prepare students for college level courses and work-based opportunities that equip students for the future. I guess I get it. So this is everything from uh, working with the K-12 or in, in looking at early admit, um, dual enrollment, to partnerships uh, to get students out into the workforce through internships and co-ops, and even after they leave Mott to help them continue with their employment. And the next steps? We need to prepare recommendations for incorporating the commitments into the culture of the college. So, and questions and answers after the other group. Okay, let's give them a hand, please. So the first question I have, um, I guess for the student experience task group members, is there anything that needs to be added? Clarified for you. Great. So, questions. You all are the quietest group. Is it? Is it because it's being recorded? I, I, I suggest coffee. <laughs> Great explanations. You said. Okay. And wonderful presentations. Yes, right here. Wait, we have a we have a mic coming for you. Well, it was being recorded. Yes. I just wanted to compliment the student on expressing herself. You did a fantastic job. And I'm sorry you had that experience, but hopefully it'll get better. Anyone else? Can anyone give their thoughts? Because we really want to hear. This is your chance for your voice to say, are we on the right track? Are we not? Is there something we missed? Yes. My name is Kenneth Martin, Director of Student Services Communication. Uh, I think the committee did an excellent job, and we're on point in the direction that we need to go with um, the pathway. So excellent job to everyone that served on that committee. Thank you. Anyone else, any other comments? Okay, then I'm gonna do it this other way that I did the AQIP projects. If you um, are in agreement with uh, the commitments, the four commitment statements that this group has put together, which is charting our course, for the student experience, please just raise your hand. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give them another hand. The next group that's going to come forward um, worked on the employee experience. And so, uh, I have some employee experience uh, task group members in the audience. We're going to do this the same way where if there are any, anything that's missing that you feel that they need to, you need to jump in, that's perfectly fine. So I am going to turn it over to Jackie, maybe. Yes. Okay. 
Hello, I'm Jackie Knoll, English faculty, and this is Vanessa Ferguson, communications faculty. We're both members of the Employee Experience Task Group. Um, this task was put together by Dr. Walker Grafia in late January with the purpose of answering the question, what, is a, what does a successful employee experience at Mott look like? And I want to emphasize that this group's work is a work in progress, um, much like the student experience task group. Um, the work of this group is not finished. We are here to show you what we have accomplished so far in just less than three months. Um, first, these are the members of the employee experience task group. As you can see, this is a cross-functional team. Every employee group at the college was represented on this task group. And as I said, the purpose of this group was to develop the major tenets of a successful Mott employee experience, although like the student group, we chose to replace the word tenets with commitments. And um, a major tool in our doing so was the use of this survey, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. So just like with the student group, we had a process that we worked through over the course of the last few months. And here's just some of the basic things, how many times we met. Um, one of the things that we had is that we had a number of smaller groups that worked outside of our main meetings that we had. They were tasked with certain assignments. We did a partnership with Genesis where we were invited to come for site visits. They just went through a transformation in the last few years where they changed kind of their focus where they have their management team on down. They have daily meetings where they look at things that are issues at hand within the hospital. And we kind of looked at some of the processes that they've done to kind of engage employees and make sure that employees have the tools they need to be successful. So we had a chance to go there on site visits. We also, as Jackie mentioned, there's still a lot more to come. We are going to share with you our commitments, but then we're also working through specific recommendations because we don't, unlike with some of the other groups, there's not some of those equip recommendations for students. We are looking at things that are kind of new. So we will have some more specific details about all of the recommendations that we have in here. And so this was the general process, just like with the student group, we started meeting in January. We also, here are kind of the questions that guide that were the guiding guidance for us as we went through the semester. We were, these are questions that were driven by Dr. Beverly from the beginning, things that we needed to look at. So not only helping us figure out who are our employees because we have such a broad diverse group whether it be through the different staff groups or looking at the different levels of faculty, people who are engaged on a daily basis or those that are only here maybe once a week if you're a part-time faculty member. So looking at those, defining those characteristics of who our employees are, also wanting to see not only what do they want out of that experience while they're working here, but also what are some of the things that they need? What are some of those things they need to be successful, need to be able to best service our students? And then also our main goal was looking at what can we do to make sure that we ensure that our employees are committed and want to work here long term? How can we try to get people here as long as possible and maybe even working towards that goal of keeping people here through retirement? So those were kind of the main things that we looked at, the guiding questions as we started working towards those commitments. Um, I also want to emphasize that the question we asked employees was, what do you need? The question was not, what do you need that you're not getting? So I want you to keep that in mind as we kind of go through the six commitments that our group came up with, okay? Um, also, um, this is, um, I want to pause for a second to give um, a lot, give a ton of credit to Michael and Aaron from IR. Um, they are the ones that designed the survey that most of you probably took that was sent to all employees. Uh, they're the ones that also designed the focus group question. Some of you probably participated in the focus groups, and they are the ones that came up with the questions with a great deal of input from our task group, okay? When they came in, um, we told them some, we told them what we were thinking, and they helped to transform our ideas into a very well-designed survey, 
and um, also well-designed focus groups. And then they took the data collected from the survey and from the focus groups and kind of put that together in a way that would make sense to you know, those of us with no formal training in research methods. You know, they said, okay, here's what we learned from the survey, here's some of the overarching themes, and then they left it in our hands. Um, Aaron and Michael uh, did a great deal of work in a very short period of time, and since this is uh, in public and we're being recorded, I wanted to make sure they get the credit they deserve. And after um, we had a chance, after everyone in the task group had a chance to make the site visit to Genesis and also um, go through the results of the survey that Aaron and Michael put together for us, we had a lot of discussion and a lot of friendly debate about how to best word and define each tenet or commitment as we decided to phrase it. There we go. So here are the six overarching commitments for employee success that our group came up with. First, we are committed to inform, guide, and support student success. Basically, all of us in the group, no matter what area of the college that we represented, we all agreed right away on one thing, and that is we are all here at Mott to serve students. And that, let's see, we will work together to help students succeed every step of the way. Our second commitment that we developed was looking at the fact that we really want our employees to feel valued. So not only through formal processes, whether it be where you have a formal recognition for faculty and staff awards, all the way down to just those everyday interactions that you have with employees. So making sure whether it be formal or informal that we uplift each other and that we create a positive environment for everyone to work in. And so that was our second commitment. Our third one was really looking at a culture of professionalism. We wanted to make sure that we treat each other with respect, whether it be interactions between faculty and staff, interactions with faculty, interactions with staff, interactions with students. We wanted to make sure that everyone's treated with respect from one-on-one -on -one interactions all the way up to those bigger, larger meetings. The next thing that we wanted to look at is we wanted to look at ways to engage our employees. So not just through committees, but also looking at beyond what are some activities and different things that we can engage and have people feel connected to the institution. We want them to have that connection to Mott beyond their job. So looking at prof professional opportunities all the way up to um, events that will be promoted to the college as a whole. The fifth tenet, uh, or commitment, so I'm sorry, uh, we are committed to maximizing employee performance and we will provide accessible and robust professional development and training, current resources and tools. The last, oh, missed that part. And we will deliver relevant, timely and accurate information. Last, uh, we are committed to fair compensation and advancement opportunities, and we will routinely perform market and talent management analysis and develop employees for promotion. And again, these, these um, I want to I want to repeat again. We want to repeat the the um, these commitment these commitments were all driven by the responses that employees gave in the survey and in the focus groups. Okay, this committee. So we started out with our ideas, but it was very important that we find out what all of the employees at Mott want, and we took that very seriously when we were designing these commitments. In other words, the answers that people gave to the survey, you know, they weren't sent out into the, they didn't go out into the ether. We read them, and we took them very seriously. The next step is to take these commitments and from these commitments, develop a series of recommendations. That's the next um, task of this task group. And that will be coming down the pike. So. Thank you. 
Okay, those that were on the employee experience task group, anything that we need to add? Yes. Nothing to add. I just wondered what you were looking for at Genesis and did you discover any things that you could bring back to mind? What we were looking for at Genesis was we were, we, were went, we were going to a workplace that in the recent past has taken steps to improve their employee culture with the end goal in mind of improving patient care. This was a recent undertaking at Genesis. And we, um, the Employee Experience Task Group, we were divided into smaller groups of four or five. Each group made a site visit at a different date and time. And the purpose of the site visit was kind of to see how things are run at Genesis. You know, how are concerns handled? How is information disseminated? You know, how do people at Genesis work together to provide the best ultimate patient care? Does that make sense? I just want to add that um, the reason why it was Genesis and hospitals was that I had the opportunity to take part in a think tank experience, uh, well, for the last three years. And in that experience, you find where higher education has um, some parallels to other industry, and you're able to learn how to incorporate what other industry has been through to help higher ed be successful. And one of the things that came out was that healthcare went through the same transformation of, they call theirs patient success, that higher ed is now going through with student success. So we actually spent time in hospitals looking at the transformation of being more doctor, centered into being more patient centered and why the changes happened and so when I actually visited Genesis here uh, just on one of the routine tours I could actually see everything that I had learned during that think tank experience about healthcare and the transformation that they had to make and I actually shared my story of how I knew the change because I actually went through it from how things used to be to now being patient-centered. So I think they learned a lot from that. And then, Vanessa, I believe you have a, a relative maybe that... My husband used to work at Genesis. Yes, so, <laughs> right. So she actually shared as well about some of the things that happened before to what is going on now with Genesis, so that was why Genesis. Okay, any other questions, comments? Okay, so you, you have to tell me now, you have to tell us um, where we're headed, where the team has come up with, uh, with those six commitments. You know, I, I need to hear verbally voices, you know, saying, are we on the right track or not, or, or, or what? So to be fair, I didn't know what you guys were gonna present when I made that comment that we were all on the same um, path. We were all having, all committed to student success and that it was really interesting to see the first commitment was that it was not necessarily about employees directly, it was about employees saying, I come here because I believe in this. And that really makes you feel good because that's why you get involved in education is because you really believe in a higher cause. So anyway. Anyone else? Okay, so. Uh, Please, by a show of hands, if you support the direction of the commitments, the six commitments, would you please raise your hands now? Thank you very much. They've done a wonderful job. It's going to be a great year. I am looking forward to it. We are Imagineers. 
Mott Imagineers. As we go through this next stage, it's going to be a great time because we are going to have the opportunity to do things that we probably had never thought of at some point. But now, aha! And it's the best thing for where we are, where our community is, and what our students need. So we're charting our future. And that's a great thing. Planning is necessary. Action is essential. I'm asking you, I've charged you with being our recruiters. I have one of them here. But remember as you're going out, talk about Mott. Talk about coming. Talk about staying. Talk about the great things that are happening here. I need you. We need you. The community needs us. So thank you. Thank you.